Hello, my name is John Burns with Siemens, and in this session I will be describing how easy it is to configure Siemens IO Link devices using the Allen Bradley Point IO IO Link Master. Already configured in our project is the Point IO rack system, and we've already inserted their IO Link Master. If I double click on the master, it'll open up the properties for the device. One of the first settings you have to do is on the channels, are the all four channels going to be talking to IO Link devices? For this application, we did set that up and it's easily done clicking this change button and making that choice. Once you have them set up as IO Link devices, to add the individual devices, come over here and click on the right hand tab labeled IO Link. And you, again, you can see in this project, we've configured the first three out of the four channels as IO Link devices, the first one being an electronic RFID key switch that Siemens offers for access control on a machine. And the second and third devices are a pair of three phase current monitoring relays uh, that are used to measure current voltage and power off of a uh, system as well. If I was to try and add a fourth device, it's as simple as clicking on the change button here and in the lower right hand button corner, click on the button with the three dots. It'll open up a catalog for all your registered IO Link devices. If the device that you want to add is not in the list, it's as simple as coming down here and clicking on register IODD, go out to your hard drive and select the IO Link device description file and register it. Once it's registered, it becomes a, an available choice in this catalog. So in this case, if I wanted to add one of a Siemens motor starter IO Link devices, I could expand the tree down to finally get to this IO Link device, which is a full voltage motor starter on IO Link, and add that as my fourth device. For this session, I'm going to leave it with just the three devices. So I'll exit back out of these screens. And now once you're done configuring the IO Link devices, you confirm by clicking OK. When you do that, at the same time, some controller tags are also generated. So if I open up controller tags here, you'll see under the IO Link rack configuration, under inputs, you'll see some data tags here for channel 0, channel 1, and channel 2. If I expand the information for channel 0, you'll see from the RFID key switch, it's going to provide two bytes of input data coming into the Rockwell system using those data tags. And then for the current monitoring relays under channel 1 and channel 2, you'll see those monitoring relays supply four bytes of cyclic data per device. In addition to cyclic data, several IO Link devices also provide the ability to pull extra information acyclically. The way that we do that in the Rockwell system is a combination of using UDTs or user-defined data types and the message instruction. So in our case here, if I come over here for user-defined data types, I've created two UDTs, one for the RFID key switch system. And if you look at that, it's several variables including a message underscore out and a message underscore in variable length of 23 bytes each. And the second UDT is for the monitoring relays. And in this one, I've created 58 bytes of input and 58 bytes of output uh, information that'll be communicated acyclically. Once you create the UDT, you then go back up to controller tags and in this case for the RFID key switch, I created a, an additional t tag called key switch. And if you expand that, you'll see that's the information set up from the UDT. And we also set up a second tag with the UD UDT for the monitoring relay. So if I come over here for MV for 3RR, that tag, as you can see, is of type UDT underscore 3RR MV. And if I expand that, you'll see on the input and on the output, 58 bytes of data and tags set up for that device as well. 
So that gives you the location where you can store the, the information coming from the device. The way you actually get the information is using the message command. So if I expand on my main program to a subroutine here, you'll see at the top of this subroutine several lines of logic using the cyclic data from the RFID key switch that at first it discerns what color of key stick is actually inserted into the device, a green, a yellow, a red, or a blue uh, key. And then turning the knob on the reader device will allow the operator to now select different levels of access. And this next four lines of code determine what level of access has been selected. As I scroll down, this gets into the acyclic communication. So now using these message commands, and I'll click on this one to the right first, this is the message command for the RFID key switch. So most of the variables here are determined by looking in the manual for the IO Link Master from Rockwell. On the service code, we've set it to 4D to read a complete index of information from a device. 3A3 is a fixed value for the master. The attribute determines what channel uh, device we want to talk to. And then on the instance, that value comes from the IO Link device itself. So in that case, Siemens provided that information. And we wanted to read in instance number 94, which allows us to read in the unique hex uh, addresses of the keys as they get inserted. And as you can see in the uh, source and destination elements, we have assigned to that UDT generated variable key switch one. Uh, to bring in those 23 bytes and put the information there. In the case of the monitoring relay, if I come over and look at this other message command, you can see similarly the service code is 4D again to read the entire index. 3A3 again I said was fixed, but you'll see now the attribute is 1 because now I'm pulling the information from the second channel on the master. However, the instance is still called 94, again from the Siemens manual for the monitoring relay. Asking for instance 94 grabs all of the measured values that are available from that device. Once they're uh, grabbed, they are then uh, stored in the, again, the UDT uh, variable that we created, MV for 3 rr We'll deposit those 58 bytes of information into that tag uh, designation. Once I have that information, say for the RFID key switch, we can now also create some HMI screens using a Siemens HMI. And so that's what I've done here on our project. So here's our HMI running. And you'll see no key is currently inserted into the reader. As I insert in a green key, you'll see a green key has now up to two levels of available access and also when I inserted the key you'll see on the right hand side of the screen where it says inserted key here's the unique hex address that's associated with that green key even if you had multiple green keys each one would have individual hex codes associated to it as I twist the knob on the reader I can now first select say level one uh, access and if I rotate the knob one more time you can see the operator can then go up to level two but it won't go any higher because his maximum available level of access is level two that concludes our uh, session for today i hope you enjoyed it thank you and have a good day